Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. We have x cubed plus x squared equals 2 and we're going to be looking for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and the first method is called no pain no gain. It's kind of like shows you hopefully how factoring can be helpful. So for the first method we're going to do a little bit of substitution. First step I'm going to replace x with y minus one third. So you might be asking why I'm doing this. So my goal is the following. First, let's put everything on the same side. This is a cubic equation. I want to get rid of the x squared term because I'm going to use the cubic formula and it basically relies on that. So I'm going to substitute uh, x with y minus one third. How do you get that? How do you know that's minus one third? So you look at the coefficient of x squared, which is one. So you take that and then you put a minus sign in front of it and then divide by the highest power that will be 3 so that's uh, what you need to use x equals y minus 1 third is that y plus negative 1 third it's the same thing so it kind of tells you that if you have a quartic then you're going to divide by 4 uh, quintic no quintic formula but you could probably still do it anyways let's go ahead and solve this if you plug this in you're going to get y minus 1 third cubed plus y minus one third squared equals two. If you expand it, the cubes, put it all together and clear all the fractions, multiply both sides by something, you're going to get this at the end. So to save you all that trouble, but you can definitely check my work, you're going to get the following cubic equation. 27y cubed minus 9y minus 52 equals zero. Awesome. Fairly simple, right? The square term, the quadratic term disappeared. We got a different variable, but that's okay because this is kind of like a linear substitution. Very easy to go back. All right. So let's go ahead and solve this using the cubic formula. But before that, we have to do a little bit more substitution. So there's going to be a lot of substitution with the first method. Hopefully that'll allow you to practice. 27y cubed can be written as 3y to the third power minus 3 times 3y minus 52. Hopefully you see what I see. I'm going to replace 3y with something. How about z? z is a nice variable. So we get something simpler. A monic polynomial. z cubed minus 3z minus 52 equals 0. So that was the goal. We wanted to get a monic polynomial that doesn't have a quadratic term. In other words, we don't have any z squared or y squared. Make sense? So how do we solve this problem using the cubic formula? No, no matter what you call it, Ferrari, Ferrer, Ferrero, Cardano, you know, Tartaglia, so many different uh, stories about it, right? Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a good identity. If you take a plus b cubit and then from it, if you subtract the two terms in the middle, you end up with the first and last terms, which are cubes perfect cubes and this is perfect so this is how you use the cubic formula I mean that's how I use it at least so we're going to replace a plus b with z so suppose a plus b is z then we get something like z cubed minus 3ab z minus a cubed plus b cubed equals zero from here right okay and then Compare this to our equation. Kind of write them, write them like this. And hopefully you'll get a better idea. Look at the one-to-one -one correspondence. Isn't that amazing? 3AB is the same as 3. So like this. And this guy over here is the same as 52. So this gives us a system of equations. That's how the cubic formula works. So we get 3AB equals 3, which gives us AB equals 1 and a cubed plus b cubed equals 52. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. One more time substitution. Yay! Substitution rocks, right? So from here I can basically replace b with 1 over a and then go ahead and use it here. Replace b with 1 over a. This gives us a cubed plus 1 over a cubed equals 52. Don't try to guess it because it's hard. It's not an integer. So let's 
turn this into a nicer equation. How do we do that? First, multiply both sides by a cubed. a to the 6 plus 1 equals 52 a cubed. And then put everything on the same side. Yay. But this, this is not a nice equation. Mm, sort of the 6 power is problematic. But we only have 6 and 3rd powers. So we can turn this into a quadratic by replacing a cubed with c and recognizing that a to the 6 is just a cubed squared. Right? So this gives us the following. c squared minus 52c plus 1 equals 0. You see, the whole idea is collapsing this or turning this into a quadratic because the quadratics we know how to solve there's a formula and that's how we solve it with the quartic you can turn it into a cubic which you can solve by turning that into a quadratic but the, with the quintic you don't have that luxury unfortunately it can't be turned into something uh, less monstrous than the original one in most cases some quintics are solvable the group of solvable quintics is an interesting topic. You can search search for that. And there's a lot of interesting uh, transformations like, what is called? How do you read that? Chernow's transformation? Anyways, it's just crazy stuff. Group theory, Galois theory, crazy stuff. Anyways, so we're going to keep it simple here. This is our quadratic. Let's solve it using the quadratic formula. Well, if you use the quadratic formula, it gives you 26 plus 15 root 3 for the C values. And you can call them C sub 1 and C sub 2 if you want. And 26 minus 15 root 3. Obviously, the coefficients of all are all rational, so we get um, irrational conjugates. So what? Okay, so C is what? C is A cubed. So to find the value of A, I'm going to have to set this equal to A cubed. Or I'm going to have to cube root this number. Okay, so that's going to be interesting. And obviously, in that case, uh, b is going to be the cube root of the other number. And you can switch them around, doesn't matter, because at the end, a and b are being added to get z. So it doesn't matter which one is which. Okay? So those are the a and b values. And we said that z is equal to a plus b. So let's go ahead and add these values as if they're going to simplify when we add. They're not. It's just going to be a radical plus a radical. But these are conjugates. So obviously, you can cube both sides. You can do some stuff. Anyways, this is too much stuff. So I'm going to give you that as well for free. If you cube root this, this gives you 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3. And you can verify this by cubing 2 plus root 3. You're going to get 26. And 26 kind of gives you an idea that maybe at some point we're going to have something like, I don't know. Uh, is it? No, it, I thought it was 27 minus 1, but... That's probably something else. Anyways, so these are going to cancel out. So if you have two conjugates and you cube root them, their cube roots are also going to be conjugates, as you can see here. So from here, z equals 4. All right, fairly easy. A uh, little painful, but yes. So z is 4, but what is z? z is equal to 3y. So y from here is 4 thirds, but that's not what we're looking for either because we're looking for x. What is x? Okay, remember, x is equal to y minus one-third. Well, if you forgot, you can look it up. Well, it's kind of hard during the premiere, but anyways, uh, that's what it is. Yay, x equals y minus one-third. And remember where the minus one-third came from, right? We kind of used uh, that formula to eliminate the uh, quadratic term. So now, uh, y is about four-thirds. Minus one third, that's going to be three thirds, which is one. Wow, that was easy. X equals one. No, it wasn't easy. Nine minutes of blah, blah, blah. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to the nicer formula or nicer method, second method. So first of all, I, I'm hoping you notice that the sum of the coefficients is zero for this polynomial, right? If you replace X with one, it's a solution. So X equals one is a solution. Great. Is that the only solution? Oh, by the way, I didn't find the complex solutions here because I'm going to do them in the second method. All right. So bear with me. The graph is coming up. So we got to hurry up. So x equals 1 gives me the following. x cubed minus 1 plus x squared minus 1 equals 0. x minus 1. A lot of factoring practice here. And difference of two cubes, difference of two squares, so on and so forth. Take out x minus 1. You get this plus this, which is x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then this equal to 0 gives us x equals 1, obviously. 
that's the real solution this one is not so real from here we get x equals anyways let me just write all the solutions together as a solution set we got one we got negative one plus i and negative one minus i which are complex numbers let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll just finish up so we have a polynomial that intersects this horizontal line at one point not because it's always increasing because it's not always increasing if you look at the derivative but uh, it is it has a maximum here it has a minimum here therefore the r line is going to be above that minimum i mean the maximum value here therefore it's not going to intersect it one more time only one time and that gives us the only real solution x equals one and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it. please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and apologize for the lengthy video bye bye